Capcom has just released Dragon's Dogma 2. And boy, is it poorly optimized. With the right graphics settings, can we get serviceable performance while maintaining good visual quality? Let's take a look. Let's start with 4K since these settings will be the basis for all resolutions. We can leave the frame rate at variable. V-Sync on, dynamic resolution off. Now, I'm the type of guy who tries to avoid upscaling at all costs. I'd rather sacrifice graphics elsewhere in order to run the game at a native 4K. This game, however, is too demanding to even consider doing that while maintaining a reasonable frame rate. We'll be using FSR at the quality setting. For those of you on NVIDIA cards, use the equivalent DLSS setting. I left the upscale sharpness at its default setting. Ambient occlusion on. Screen space reflections on. Mesh quality high. Texture filtering high. Texture quality high. Foliage quality high. Resource intense effects quality high. Shadow quality high. Shadow cache on. Contact shadows on. Motion blur, bloom, depth of field, lens flare, and distortion are up to your preference. You can see what I chose on screen. Subsurface scattering on. Motion quality high. With these settings, you'll get a frame rate that fluctuates between the 60s and 80s in most areas. If you'd prefer a more consistent frame rate, set the frame rate cap to 60 FPS. Your performance will occasionally dip into the 50s during combat and in areas where the CPU bottlenecks your GPU. And speaking of bottlenecks, your performance will take a huge dump in towns and cities, but we'll talk about that later. Moving on to 1440p, we can keep the exact same settings as 4K, but we're going to turn off upscaling now. It doesn't need it, and since the game's so CPU bound, lowering the internal resolution doesn't have much benefit anyway. Additionally, FSR introduces quite a lot of ugly visual noise around objects at this resolution. It might be difficult for you to see from this footage due to YouTube's video compression, but believe me, it's not pretty. Set the rendering mode to progressive and turn on TAA. Unfortunately, this is one of those games that was obviously made with TAA in mind, so it looks quite ugly without it. You'll get a bit of ghosting as expected with TAA, but it's not so noticeable as to be distracting. With these settings, you can expect frame rates consistently above 70, and often even above 100 in some areas. As far as 1080p goes, there's not much to say other than to use the same settings as 1440p. In areas where the CPU isn't choking to death, you can expect good performance, such as at this ogre encounter, where the frame rate was above 100 FPS. Well, that does it for the settings. As you can clearly see, the biggest limiting factor for performance is your CPU, regardless of the resolution you play at. When you get to a populated area like you see here, your frame rate will not only take a nosedive, but the frame timing becomes erratic, which results in unsightly stuttering. Your mid-range CPU will struggle with this game, and from what I've seen, having a high-end processor isn't that much better either. So, based purely on performance, do I recommend buying Dragon's Dogma 2? Well, that depends. If you're extremely hyped for this game and you're willing to overlook the terrible performance in cities and towns, I'd say go ahead and buy it. The graphics and performance are um, adequate outside of the aforementioned trouble spots. But if you're willing to be a little patient, I would wait on this one, especially at $70. Capcom has recently stated that they're looking into improving performance, so I'd highly suggest holding off until they deliver on that. Also, you gotta wonder how much of a performance hit we're taking because of Denuvo. Just saying. All right, that'll do it for this video, guys. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you found this video helpful. And if you pound that dislike button, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a comment telling me what you disagreed with. Till next time.